You've been connected to the Dead Set Cast. Enjoy the show. Welcome to episode four of the Dead Set Cast. My name is Brad, aka UB Central, and unfortunately, Aftermath won't be joining us today because he's at PAX East having a ton of fun. And I'm totally jealous of him. But with that said, the show must go on. So joining me today is a guest that I'm personally excited to have on. His name is Tyler, better known as Tidemite. And starting off, I'm going to ask you the toughest question. How are you doing? That's tough. Hang on. Let me think for a sec. Um, no, I'm good. No, I'm doing really good. Thanks, man. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on the Dead Set Cast. Of course. Uh, also, I do want to mention you can skip around the show using the timestamps in the description down below. Now, Tyler, for those listening who aren't aware of your channel, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your channel mainly focuses on? Yeah, sure. So my channel mainly focuses on Assassin's Creed content, though I do a lot of other different things here and there. I love just playing a whole lot of video games, but primarily it's Assassin's Creed content. Uh, I guess mainly news, but I do a lot of theory videos and uh, and history videos of Assassin's Creed. Uh, it's called my main series at the moment is called Assassin's Creed: The Truth, and every episode I look at a different part of the Assassin's Creed lore and kind of go in depth and explain things as well as put theories together, uh, and then also just putting commentaries, gameplays uh, together as well as co-hosting the Kill Connor Club podcast with uh, James, who was on the second episode I believe of the Dead Set Cast. Yes, he was. So, yeah, that's primarily what I do. And uh, I definitely recommend checking out uh, both your channel and the Kill Connor Club. Uh, I personally don't approve of that podcast's name, but it's still worth listening to. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to have you on uh, because I do remember you specifically saying that you did enjoy Watch Dogs, which personally caught me a bit off guard because I feel like you're a bit critical of games, especially Ubisoft ones, but... um. I wanted to ask you, what would you rate Watch Dogs out of 10? I think this will surprise you even more. Uh, probably a 9. 9 Jeez. out of 10. Yeah I, yeah, I would not expect that from you. I absolutely loved the first Watch Dogs. Like, I really just... It was my favorite game of 2014, and I, I know what you mean. I, I'm a critical guy. When I don't like something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something about it. I'm very vocal. You know, I don't hold back. But Watch Dogs, no, I, I mean... There was a lot of, you know, complaints about glitches. I didn't run into them. I just had a good experience with the game overall, and I loved every second of the game. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree, too. I gave it an 8.5, like, after playing it through four times. And my first playthrough, I gave it, like, an 8 as well. And I can't stress this enough. If you didn't like Watch Dogs the first time you played it, I think you should give it another shot because the more I played it through, the more I enjoyed it for what it was. Obviously, that won't happen for like every single one of you. But again, I still think it's worth trying out. And if you can, uh, try not to compare it to um, Grand Theft Auto. Because if you do, you'll see like there's things that Watch Dogs is missing and things that Grand Theft Auto has. But if you if you don't compare the two, uh, I think Watch Dogs is a wonderful experience. But uh, anyways, on to the news for this week. There is none. Uh, what a surprise. <laughs> However, if you did miss miss last week's episode, we did mention that Ubisoft's E3 press conference has a confirmed date, which is Monday, June 13th at 1 p.m. Pacific time, which is also 4 p.m. Eastern time. I, of course, will be uploading tons of videos on that day. Uh, Tyler, I'm pretty sure you'll upload some things, too. You know what, Tyler? 100%. You know what you should do? I... First off, I gotta say, I love your intro. Like, I don't know why, it's just so catchy. <laughs> it's simple, but like, I love listening to it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. When I click great. on a video of yours, I'll just keep play, playing the intro before you even say anything. Just, I love that song. I don't know why. <laughs> and you used to have like an extended version of it. And uh, now it's shorter for obvious reasons. But yeah, I, I don't know. I love that song. Yeah, so do I. It's uh, I don't know why either, but I love it too because it's kind of goofy. But uh, you know, I, and I love that I could just change it up. Like like you said, obvious reasons. I shortened it from like a fifteen second intro. It's just too long. To now, it's just seven seconds short, sweet. But I can change it up. Like you know, every couple of months, I'll add different games or update it to the new Assassin's Creed or whatever. So yeah, it's a. I know what you mean. It, it gets me. It still gets me. <laughs> Um, okay, so with that out of the way, it is time for Fixer Contracts. If you don't know how this works, please go back and watch the previous episodes because I'm not going to explain it anymore, starting with this episode. No, I've done Savage. I, I explained it like three times. Like, 
if you if you don't know what this game is just go back and watch other episodes because <laughs> those episodes are good too but all right uh tyler the first contract slash question is should Watch Dogs 2 have one antagonist? I will decline that contract. Okay, and why? So, I feel like it's tough in a game like Watch Dogs to just purely have... I Obviously, I understand that one antagonist would mean they still have all their cronies and have a whole lot of control. But I, I feel like something like Watch Dogs, it's hard to believe that all this power could be with one guy, if that makes sense. Especially when, if you're assuming it's something like an underground crime, like the first game, or possibly to do with the whole CCTV and kind of controlling the people and watching over, like, it could be a similar to Abstergo with Assassin's Creed. Like, that's what it always seemed like to me with the first game. I was always very suspicious of, why do they want to watch everyone all the time? What's, what's the real goal? Is there someone behind this, or is there a group of people behind this? And I feel like it'd be more interesting if... Perhaps there is one, uh, you know, that we know of, but as you play through the game, you realise it's a bit bigger than that, and things like that. I feel like it would do better to have multiple very powerful people to be the antagonist there, and you're really that underground guy try and vigilante trying to, you know, take them all down, and you think it's just one guy, and you realise it's a bigger conspiracy, similar to, I guess, an Assassin's Creed game, but not get to this final guy but it be a group of people that inevitably is just maybe too much for one guy to handle. That's why there's future games, etc. Yeah, I would also have to decline, but only if like Ubisoft did it in a certain way. Uh, for example, with the first Watch Dogs, we already knew the game was going to have a couple of main enemies before it even released, and it wasn't like a surprise at all, which kind of ruined that aspect for me. Uh, what I would do for the next game personally is like announce one main antagonist, and that's it. And then when players finally have their hands on the game, uh, they'll find out there's like another enemy or a bigger enemy, like you said, uh, behind the scenes. And also, I think they should just keep the antagonist count like person wise to one or two people. Uh, for me, three is just three or more is just a bit crowded. And I feel like if that happens, uh, these characters won't get flushed out enough like with the first game. And uh, somewhat surprisingly, 75% of you would accept this contract and we declined it, so we're, we're the 25%. But uh, to be honest, I can see where some people are coming from because, you know, I just felt like it would be 60-40 kind of split. However, again, I can see why people would accept this because one enemy and they can just focus on that one guy. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I understand why they'd say this, but at the same time, I guess it is a tough question to answer yes or no. Because I think there's a lot of complexities to it, like you like you said before, it's hard to flesh out all these characters, and I mean, I'd suggest it's not about fleshing out a bunch of antagonists, but at least introducing that in future installments, there's a bit more of a power play going on, perhaps, or DLCs, or things like that, so it could be one or two, like you said, antagonists that are fleshed out, but there are maybe perhaps a secret, I don't know, organization, quote-unquote, that they're a part of, uh, maybe not too much of an Assassin's Creed-esque copy, but uh, something to that vein, I guess. Yeah, I can understand, like, completely with what you're saying, and I mean, hopefully those 75% uh, just kind of understand where we're coming from. Obviously, you don't have to agree with us, but uh, at least just kind of see where we're coming from in that aspect. Yeah, 100%. Now, the second fixer contract is, should Watch Dogs 2 introduce hand-to-hand -hand combat. I would accept this contract, and I'm not just saying that, you know, to make Watch Dogs more like GTA, which I can already see someone commenting that right now, but uh, seriously, I feel like this would help out the combat system a lot because right now it's just click B or circle, and that's it. There's literally nothing to combat, which makes the game a bit easier in that regard, and for me personally, I would have something somewhat similar to Syndicate, not an exact copy, but, you know, something along those lines just to give you an idea of what they could do. Yeah, I would also accept the contract. I definitely feel Watch Dogs could do some hand-to-hand. -hand. I mean, the only thing you'd say is hand-to-hand, -hand, or at least is that close-up, was when you pulled out your, your big stick, and I'm not talking about his penis, but uh, and then he'd whack the dude when you, you were doing your takedowns and stuff. But, I mean, 
something as simple as, and I can see for just general players, it's something people just assume games like this would have. Like, I did a video recently on my channel playing Watch Dogs, and I did it with my friend who hadn't played it before, and he goes, can you just punch that guy in the face? I said no, and he's like, what is this game? Like, that's the first thing he said when we walked onto the street. It seems like something that would be in the game, and it's also a normal tool to have for different story aspects as well, and just in general as a gameplay feature. You know, you don't need to necessarily shoot everybody in the face. Maybe sometimes you want to be the Batman and just, you know, maybe knock a guy out or two. Yeah, and like I kind of gave in my first answer, I can, like, you know, if you compare GTA to Watch Dogs, I can see why your friend's like, why can't you punch that guy in the face? And, like, again, I'm not just accepting this contract just to have a feature that GTA has. Like, again, it would just make sense to have something rather than just clicking B or circle. Yeah, sure, especially someone that's doing things like being a vigilante and hacking things. I feel like they know some sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat, some sort of martial art, you know, that seems to make sense. And I mean, both of us accepted the contract, and so did 90% of people on the Twitter poll agreed that there should be hand-to-hand -hand combat in the next Watch Dogs. So, I mean, I think it's a pretty, not quiet, but close to unanimous voice that there should be hand-to-hand -hand combat in Watch Dogs 2. Yeah, Ubisoft uh, should definitely introduce it in the next game, and like, just with that Twitter poll, if they don't, a lot of people are going to be disappointed, and again, it doesn't really make much sense not to. But uh, on to the last question, Tyler, should Watch Dogs 2 have multiplayer? Uh, this is a tough question. I will accept the contract. I think the multiplayer in the first Watch Dogs was certainly interesting, but it felt like a bit of a sideshow and just chucked in for the sake of it. Uh, so if they do, I would like to see them do something different. Not necessarily an adversarial like, a, like any other game, but if you look back to Assassin's Creed, again I always compare you know, Ubisoft games with, with their flagship franchise, but their multiplayer changed everything like it wasn't anything like it before and I'd just like to see maybe perhaps Watch Dogs have their own multiplayer that you've never seen anything like it before in that sense uh, and a bit more fleshed out because it did seem like it was just here's the general side missions you can do for fun and here's a friend added to it with Watch Dogs 1 so it would definitely need to be something a lot different and a full overhaul if they were uh, to yeah add it into the game. Yeah, I would have to agree with you again. I think we agreed on all three of these. <laughs> Aftermath and I have done that before too, so whatever. Uh, but yeah, I would accept this as well. I feel like with a lot of open world games, once you beat that game, that's it. Like, I'm not saying everyone does it or a lot of open or like some open world games don't do this, but there is some. And like a way to have players coming back afterwards, uh, you need a system in place such as multiplayer, and I'm going to be honest, uh, I wasn't a big fan of Watch Dogs as a multiplayer. After I did some races and stuff, I was basically done with it. So as long as they improve on multiplayer and maybe add like an in-game economy for it, like GTA, I know some people are just going to give me shit for saying GTA. <laughs> like, I keep bringing it up, but still. Uh, with uh, Grand Theft Auto Online, you can buy cars. There's this whole economy, and I feel like if Watch Dogs did something like that, it would make multiplayer worth going to. Uh, because the first game kind of lacked that you know you would do some races and that's it like there really wasn't any reward that made it worthwhile so yeah i think they should add something uh or improve on multiplayer and that should have players coming back and um 69 of you would accept this contract i feel like <laughs> i feel like uh some might decline it because they want Watch Dogs 2 to only focus on the story uh, so that does make sense, but like I said, I would accept it so players could keep coming back for more. I'm so immature, I just laughed when you read out 69%. Oh. Yeah, I, I had a feeling you would do that, actually. But <laughs> I forgot. Oh, the Australian would laugh at that. Oh, of course. Wait for it. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see why. I mean, multiplayer is something you're pretty used to these days. It's hard to not have multiplayer, really. It's the whole new generation of consoles is it's all about online gameplay there's no games like division or destiny on the 360 or ps3 like it's just where games are going so it's you kind of have to you don't really have a choice 
for a selling point, especially when you're trying to hit the mainstream and not just the hardcore uh, vocal minority of fans. So I can I can definitely see why. I mean, the only reason I played the first Watch Dogs multiplayer was achievements. I was like, I need to finish all of this. So I have to sit through this. Well, at least you had a reason to go back. I, I didn't. I don't, I don't care about achievements. So after I did races, like I said, I, I was just done. But I did like uh, the online tailing kind of thing where you could just enter someone's world like seam seamlessly. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed that because that was different. And you don't actually see that in a lot of games nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I, it, it's better if it was your friend, like, to troll them. Yeah. Like, it, was, it wasn't that often... Because not many of my friends played Watch Dogs, the first one. Uh, so I didn't get much of a chance to do that. So it's fun jumping in other people's games. But then I'm like, I want to hear them, you know, on party chat or something or talk to them later. And they were like, I was so annoyed, like, that you were just in my game or something. Like, that's funny. Yeah, that, that definitely would be. Uh, also, I just want to ask, like, what game are you most excited for this year? I know this, like, wasn't really planned, but I'm just honestly curious. And this could be Ubisoft specific or not. Uh, are we assuming Watch Dogs 2 comes out this year? Uh, yes. Uh, it's tough because I don't know. There's games that are in my head that I don't know are coming out this year. So I'm, I'd probably say Watch Dogs 2, but I also don't i'm pretty sure kingdom hearts 3 isn't coming out this year and if it was there's nothing in the world that would surpass my excitement for that so i'm assuming that's not coming out so i'll probably go Watch Dogs 2 i'd say then again right now i'm blanking on every other game coming out this year though well let's just keep it to ubisoft specific uh there's four honor i think ghost recon wildlands uh probably Watch Dogs 2 there's that new IP, which, I mean, we can't really say we're hyped for because we don't know what it is. <laughs> and I th Just Dance, I know you're a huge fan of that. Oh, you know me. The Beebs uh, love, love to get a bit of get a bit of dancing going on. Actually, apparently I'm, I'm Tyler Swift now. I'm I saw Swift. that on Twitter. Yeah, so can I, do you mind if I tell the story or is that uh, go, too... No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I, I was at work yesterday and a customer came up to me and goes, well, we had a, he was asked a couple of questions and he goes, you look like, does anyone ever told you you look like, and in my head, I'm waiting for, he's going to say Justin Bieber because I've gotten that for years. And he goes, a male version of Taylor Swift. And I'm like, well, fuck, cool, bro. Thanks. And he's like, does that make you angry or happy? I just shrugged. I'm like, it, it does nothing for me, man. So I'm like, well, just call me Tyler Swift now. So Just Dance, yep, yeah, most hard for Just Dance now. I saw someone on Twitter also tweet you a picture of, like, Taylor Swift's face on your, like, head or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's so good. I'm going to put that on the screen right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> See, the only difference is you look at Taylor Swift and, sure, I'm like, well, it actually kind of fits. I'm actually annoyed how much that fits. But I'm all neck. Like, my neck is thicker than my head. So, like, <laughs> unless Taylor Swift's into full neck, that's the, only, that's the only take I have away of, like, at least I don't look like Taylor Swift, kind of maybe oh god there's gonna be a thing now tyler swift yeah i mean uh james started bread with me so your, uh, thing, your thing could be tyler swift now and i hate that my name also fits you know yeah. taylor swift tyler oh my god damn it <laughs> it's perfect you guys were meant for each other yeah i mean i, I, I mean i do like a bit of taylor swift I'm like, if she's listening out there how's it going yeah, she, she's definitely listening to the Dead Set cast. Yeah, I'm, I'm Australian, uh, and uh, I'm, I've got a positive attitude, and I'm always up for a good time, so just let's sh shout out. Taylor, <laughs> if you are listening, uh, you can check out Tyler's channel in the description down below. Tyler, I want to thank you so much for being a fantastic guest. Thank you so much. Can I ask you one question, though? Yes, you can. You asked me what my, I'm most hyped for this year. What game are you most hyped for this year? Um, okay, so, besides Watch Dogs 2, because I feel like everyone uh, knows that already, um, I would actually say For Honor, because it's just something so different, and from what I've seen, the developers are actually taking it, like, a lot more serious than other developers would, like, it doesn't feel like it's being developed by a Ubisoft studio, if that makes sense, and, like, I'm throwing shade at Ubisoft, but it's true, and also, like, with The Division... It doesn't really feel like a Ubisoft game, and that's because, you know, it was made by Massive, which is a Ubisoft studio, but they're in, like, Norway. They're not part of the 
you know, main Ubisoft formula. And again, this is like a multiplayer medieval game. So again, there's nothing really like it. And that's why I would have to go with For Honor besides, you know, Watch Dogs 2, because obviously I'm excited for Watch Dogs. Yeah, of course. I mean, I've seen a few demos of For Honor. It looks interesting. I, I think I need to look more into it before I can decide, but it's definitely something I'm paying attention to. I'll wait to E3 this year and, and make a judgment of whether I want to get it or not. I, I kind of want to do like a reaction video to it, but I'm not sure. I, I know I'm going to do one for the AC movie, and I, it's been so hard to stay away from spoilers because all of these press people I've seen at like IGN, and they're posting every little detail about the trailer, so... I'm just I've avoided to... everything. I have yeah. no idea about anything. Exactly. I only I know it comes out next month. That's it. And I want to react to it just, just to react to it. Yeah, same here. I'm with you there. Well, we could do you could we could do a full podcast reaction with you, me, and James and and Nick. It'd be awesome. Yes, I actually forgot to mention that. Right, right now, currently, I'm probably planned to be the next guest of the Kill Connor Club. Yes, certainly. I'm not sure whether it's the next episode or the episode after, but within the next two episodes, I believe, we're planning, trying to work out dates and see how it all works out. And yeah, get you on the Kill Connor Club podcast, which, as of this coming out, we just had and we've just released episode 20 with Gabe Graziani, community developer at Ubisoft Montreal, formerly of the Assassin's Creed team. It's a two and a half hour long interview podcast banter it's it's an amazing time so anyone that enjoyed this 100 percent, go have a listen to it yeah and i mean it's gabe like you can't not watch gabe so he's such a beautiful man like he's such a nice person genuinely such a better person than me like that's just what i got for that whole thing i'm like you're just a better person than i am (laughs) (laughs) the worst part is right now aftermath is probably talking to him in real life i'm just saying i've never met him in real life yeah, not well, neither have I, but I also live in the middle of nowhere, so there's, there's that. <laughs> in... All right, so I think we're going to end off the show here. This is probably the longest one, and we don't have Aftermath on the show, so that tells you something. Well, that's right. That's, that's what happens when Tyler shows up. Tyler, you're my new co-host. <laughs> <laughs> See, Nick? See? I've got this now, man. It's over for you. So just never come back from PAX, just stay in Boston, it's all good, I've got you covered, don't worry about it, man. No one will even notice. Uh, (laughs) Alright, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, Everything that we talked about will be in the description down below, and I'll see you all next week.